everyone. This is another vlog post of On the Narrow Path with Katrina McHyde on Tim McHyde's channel. I want to share a little bit of my past today with you because as I've done these Narrow Path um, posts and had feedback, I'm starting to see that many of you are getting into the same cycles that I got into with healing, uh, Father healing you on your path. And sometimes it can be really scary so I'm going to share a little bit of kind of what happened for me um, in part of the path that Father's been working with me on. And hopefully it'll comfort you and also show that it's normal and it's going to be okay. <laughs> and that he is in control and you're right in the proper cycle. So I've had a few people pop up with emails and different notes that they're, they're having some struggles because when you slow down, and start really seeing things and feeling things, it can be really, really scary. So I'm gonna go into the time when I started being slowed down and what happened, what it looked like for me and what Father's done with it to help me out, to help get me even closer to him. When I lived in the United States, I had a very hectic life. I grew up being pretty much conditioned that it's important to be busy all the time and to do it perfectly the best that you possibly can. And so it made um, my mind uh, hold up 10 billion things at once in detail, trying to make sure I got it all right and trying to get it done and right on time. And those are great skills to have, definitely, but it's very stressful and you don't get much time to think or to feel when you're in that space. So it grew some great things in me. It also helped me to learn how to disconnect from my feelings and emotions enough to just be a good work robot. <laughs> so I know in the United States sometimes, or you know, in many places, we end up working so much and uh, putting so much into our jobs or whatever we're doing in front of us that we have to disconnect just in order to make it and to survive and eat, you know, to hold down a job. And that's our perception. That's the way we grow up. And also we're taught that we're lazy or that there's something wrong with us if we take time for ourselves and that's selfish. All those things come up. So I was taught all those things. When I went to Costa Rica from the United States, life changed for me drastically. I had a seven month old baby and I had a four-year-old that was autistic, attention deficit, hyperactive disorder, trust me. Any of you that has ADHD, this child at four years old was at least two or three of you. <laughs> you probably don't believe me, but that's okay. It doesn't matter. What I'm saying is he was very active in a foreign country that I did not know the language. And, um, you know, I didn't have any friends. I had to start from scratch with friends. Now, all of that seems interesting by itself, but for someone who is busy and has now gone to a foreign country, a developing country, I still call it third world country. I know we've changed in the 90s. There's somewhere in the early 2000s that's supposed to be developing country now, but it's third world country, believe me. <laughs> Uh, um, you know, those type of countries, they don't have the same services that the United States has. I would stand in the bank with a four month old and a, a attention deficit hyperactive disorder child with autism and seizure disorder for two hours for a bank to, to get one transaction done at a bank. Even at the store, sometimes you would wait an hour. And that was normal and you stood there with your kids. That's what happened. And if people were nice or they opened up a, 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 another checkout, they might pull the mothers and the elderly in order to go through that, but it wasn't a given. And so my life went from going fast, fast and other people going into service and helping me do fast, fast to a culture that wasn't developed to fast, fast and you had plenty of time to stand there and think. For a person who is busy all the time, it is it can be very excruciating to stand in one place, <laughs> especially with two kids, 
and not know anyone, especially since I love people and talking, not knowing the language and have to just be with me, to slow down and be with myself. And um, I'm guessing there may be many people that have been like me or are like me um, from the past that I had a hard time with that. I felt jittery. I felt guilty for not getting anything done. I felt um, cut off from people because I couldn't speak. I felt um, alone. I felt empty. I felt tired, you know, because all of a sudden when you slow down, you can't do anything else. You just feel tired. And then you have the kids that you're dealing with on being tired and you start to feel. You start to feel. In those lines, I found out I started getting revelations. And I know that Father actually brought us to Costa Rica uh, for many reasons, and it was to get closer to Him. And for us, we needed a change. We needed a shift in the way that we were conditioned to uh, live life and to think about things. And it was very, very painful and hard and a really harsh new re <laughs> reality in some ways. Um, in other ways, it was really beautiful. Uh, there were some beautiful parts of Costa Rica as well that, that were very helpful uh, to be a nurturing place for change. Um, in this way, though, it was very dramatic and hard to stand there. I found out, standing there in line, that number one, I didn't like myself. That was a revelation. Literally, if I could have divorced myself, I would have. And I remember thinking that while I was standing in line. It was a really painful moment because all I, I was in my 30s. Yeah, I was in my 30s at that point. And I had never even considered or thought about how much I was trying to run away from myself. I had a lot of guilt. Um, I had a lot of high expectations on myself that I felt like I didn't live up to. I, I had just disappointments and also I, I felt like um, even though I worked really hard that it was never enough. So I always felt guilty that I didn't do it well enough and I, I did it all wrong and, and I'm wrong. I felt like I was wrong. Not that just what I did was wrong, but that I was wrong. I always felt like there was something wrong with me and I, I felt like that as I was in the States growing up uh, in the different societies and different groups that I was in, that I was made to be wrong uh, and that they were right. I started to agree with them and I didn't know I did. Uh, and, you know, I grew up in Christianity with the Bible. I, I, you know, went to the churches and did the best I could to be the obedient child and, and you know, service oriented and everything else. And I still felt like I lacked. And so coming straight face to face with going slow and being forced to go slow it was a whole new life. I had no choice. <laughs> um, I had to start facing how much I didn't like being me. And I found out that I didn't like being me. Not only on top of that, though. I really didn't like living. I know that scares many people to hear that. You may hear that that um, I was suicidal. I was not suicidal. I wasn't trying to get out of here early. <laughs> I just didn't like life. I mean, life had been so hard. My whole life had been so hard all the time. And I realized um, not only did I not like me, but I didn't like anything about life. And that was a really harsh reality. And also I felt alone. Like I couldn't feel God. I got spurts of feeling God throughout my life. Um, I knew he was there and I wanted to please him, but I couldn't feel him. And I felt so alone. I mean, just empty alone, black alone. And those that have gone through this path understand the black alone. It's just everything screams. The only thing that screams is you existing in the middle of black alone. <laughs> and um, so it was a very difficult time. And it brought me to some of my nervous breakdowns to finally get to the awareness of these things. 
And the nervous breakdowns were actually good because it made me face the way that I perceived myself, the way that I perceived life, um, and come up with new choices on how I was going to see both and what I thought about God and my relationship with God. What happens when we are called to slow down? It's really hard for people. That's why you hear me teach even once an hour to slow down and breathe and connect with how you're feeling and thank God, be there in the moment, ask for God for help, thank him for what has happened. Um, look at what you've done and see if you've done better with loving God with your whole heart, might and soul and loving your neighbors yourself. So you simply understand what, what father wants so that we can all live in peace and harmony together because love is about respect. It's about integrity. It's about honesty. It's about you, you respecting yourself and respecting others for the love of God. And that brings peace and joy and happiness. And so when we're not doing those things, we're falling down on any of those areas, it brings pain and it brings a lack of, of a willingness to live or, or a frustration in living and, and anger in living and trying to control things, control yourself, control others, or giving up and becoming hopeless. Yeah, I know, probably none of you can relate, right? <laughs> This is a hard path. Slowing down is the first step and you're gonna have these, uh, these emotions and you're gonna also be surprised at what you've been thinking and believing. The voices in your head like become a lot louder all of a sudden. So all of the talk, the, jatter, the, the, the chatter that you have in your head um, that goes a million miles an hour says, oh, I need to take care of the bank and I need to take care of my kid and, and, and I need to control myself. I shouldn't be so angry and I should, should do this and, and I have to do, you know, like all of it and it's like chattering all at once. Um, all of that chatter starts to get louder when you slow down. At first it gets louder and it is excruciating. And that's another thing that shows that this work, walking on the narrow path the narrow path, becoming more like Father, going closer to peace, is so difficult because you, you have to be slowed down and all that busyness has to be um, magnified by that slowing down to see exactly what it's saying, what you're really saying and connect with it and with the pain that you're feeling and you're holding, all the baggage that you've had through all the experiences that you've had that have been difficult. And so that's why I've given the tools in order to breathe and say, God is here and I am here. And I'm gonna be okay because God will never leave me. And he is 100% good and he's 100% good towards me because that helps you to stabilize in the middle of the, this, this cycle that is very painful to go through but very necessary for your healing. Because each of those things have to be unwound you have to um, get to a place where you are welcoming father to comfort you he's a gentleman he won't push comfort upon you he won't push the comforter upon you the capital c comforter upon you the holy spirit he'll offer it to you you have to be willing to take it but the way that we're willing to take it is not just by saying it that's a good portion you can you can say it it's at the same time being slow and being open to receive it. So when you're feeling all this pain and all of these thoughts magnified all of a sudden, it's like that is the point where you say, okay, now I'm willing to trust God because I know I am out of control and I can feel I am out of control and I need the comfort to come in and be in control. And it takes, it takes, you know, Father will help you as you can handle it to work through all those things and slow down your mind and to slow down things and start to, to look at them. Your thoughts, you'll find that many of them, they don't, they don't um, look like love. They don't look like they want to love God. They don't look like they want to love your neighbor and they don't want to look like they love yourself. There are many thoughts that you have that either want to give up they, they want to hurt somebody, like really hurt somebody <laughs> or somebody's, um, or, or, you know, just get revenge, hold a grudge, um, 
manipulate and control people and even yourself. That's really a lot of the thoughts that happen that we just keep going on overdrive to try to control our situations to survive, right? Because when you're just trying to eat and provide for your family or you're young and you're given a lot of responsibility when you're young and, and you don't know how to handle that responsibility, you end up in these cycles of just trying to survive. And that survivalism um, is a form of not trusting in God. And I know that's painful to hear, but until you can really recognize that you're not trusting in God and you want to transition into trusting in Him and less in just surviving and trusting in yourself or very few other people as well, then um, that, that transition can be very difficult the more years that you've been in that pattern and the more hurts you have in that area. Um, so it is not going to feel comfortable all the time. It's something that you grow and learn with with time and it's an important step to go through, okay? And so it, when those thoughts start coming up and these feelings start coming up, it's really important when things feel faster and things feel um, like more loud in your head and actually as you slow down and people are used to you always going fast and, and you're not acting the same, all of those things put together is changing your whole world. It's changing everything. And um, it, it is going to not, it's going to be many times, maybe not always, but it's always been for me, but it may be different for you, dramatic. And it's going to feel dramatic. Just know that in that process, you're learning by just slowing down in itself. I always say, when life goes fast or faster, go slower. Because it's when you're slower you can stay, stay connected. And, and although you have all these thoughts and it's very painful, you can also stay connected to God is with me and I'm going to be okay. And he doesn't want to reject me. He's not looking to reject me. He doesn't want to reject you. He's not even trying to reject you. He's trying to show you over and over again how much he accepts you through the blood of, of his son that he sent for you. And you don't know how to accept it yet. The way you accept it is by forgiving yourself, letting that blood of forgiveness um, be accepted and releasing yourself as you have been released and learning how to release other people and choosing love instead of hate and frustration and vengeance and trying to control and manipulate people to be safe. See, that's that's the hard thing about the narrow path is that in these in these end times and I do believe we're in the end times. The love of many will wax cold. There will be people that are lovers of themselves, envious, full of hate. They they you know, they have no natural love for others. And in a world that gets darker and darker in being that way, we're called actually to do the absolute opposite. And we will be persecuted for it. We will be taken advantage of for it. All these things will happen um, and do happen. People are scared of people that they can't control who are actually loving. They're scared of love because they've been hurt in the areas of love because they've been giving artificial loves that hurt and have conditions to them. And when you're giving love like Father gives love without condition because he is love, that's all he is, it scares people because they don't know what to do with love that has no conditions. I mean, try to look maybe in your own life if somebody actually didn't want something from you and actually just genuinely enjoyed you. How uncomfortable is that? You can tell how how damaged you are in that area by that, you know, just by that little question. Um, so, you know, it's, it's going to take some time to heal, but the way that we heal is to learn how to receive God's love, and you can only learn how to receive it and truly receive it when you are slow. He is in control of time. God is in control of time. And he makes it work for you when you slow down because you're asking to connect with something genuine. He is the rock. If you want to be 
uh, strong and, and feel better in life and not feel alone, it's in connection with God and through, through his son, right? Yeshua HaMashiach. And we don't know how to do that when we're going fast. We're trying to run and take care of ourselves and stay connected while we're running. First, you have to slow down and learn even how to connect before you can even learn how to crawl and walk in the spirit and in prayer as you're doing things. So you're going to go through a phase where if you decide to go down this narrow path and you may be in it now or we might go through it uh, soon, where um, life will slow down. You may lose a job. Um, there may be just a, a major change that happens in your life where you have more time and it's going to feel really scary and it's going to be, feel, um, uh, you know, like not your normal life. Um, and it may seem like you're being persecuted even when you're trying to do things right. Father wants to take care of your needs. And it is scary to live on faith and believe that Father will provide a new job uh, when it's time and that he will bring enough food for you, maybe in a humbling way through your neighbors or someone else, I don't know. Or you may lose things. You know, sometimes you do lose houses. Father sometimes allows certain things to deconstruct in your life to give you something even better, but it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good. But it's always to give you something better. It's always to bring you closer to him. It's always to help you to be able to, to go from not liking yourself, not liking life, and feeling foreign from him, feeling like he doesn't like you, um, when, which is just a bunch of lies from Satan all the way back down to Adam and Eve. He's wanting you to slow down and decide something different. If you're asking to serve the Lord of Lord and King of Kings and make him your Lord, then you, then your perception of who he is must change and the identity of who you think he is, as well as the identity of who you think you are, must be confronted. And it happens in slowness. And I know it's painful, but I promise you, God will not drop you. And things will get better in here. There will be more peace that comes here. There will be more understanding. You will be able to discern what is your thoughts and what are not your thoughts. Because not sometimes you're in agreement with thoughts that are not your own. So um, all these things are found being in slowness. Okay, I hope this really helps for all of you to give you encouragement of what it looks like. It doesn't always look pretty. It doesn't always look like a smile on the face. I mean, I smile a lot. I love smiling. And, um, you know, that has been mentioned actually this week many times. It's been mentioned, oh, you just, you have a genuine smile. I do. I've chosen to smile. I've had a lot of times of crying. I've had a lot of times of severe, severe depression. I've had a lot of times of deep, deep, tough, hard life, very hard life. And those moments, although they were very difficult to go through, and I still say it with some pause, so there's some healing still to do. Every single second of it was important for me to be where I'm at now to where I genuinely feel the love of God. I genuinely respect the life that he's given me and respect the world that he's created and the beauty that he's created. Even though it's fallen in many ways and there are things that are not working because of our fallen nature, because we've chosen to be violent and mean and cruel and controlling and manipulative and selfish. Even after all of that, there's, there's still abundance and beauty and air and leaves and fruit and there can be friends, even true ones, <laughs> that are still practicing or not perfect by any chance, by any means as well as you know, <laughs> family and, and all that stuff. So there are some things that are still beautiful, even though it's in a fallen state. And Father sustains it all. And thankfully, he's helping to restore us by this narrow path to where we will get health. I mean, physical health getting better, emotional health, psychological health, spiritual health, financial health, uh, you know, just a relationship 
this relationship starting to heal, your relationship with God starting to heal, with your relationship with yourself starting to heal, and your ability to connect in relationship with others in a healthy manner. All these things come to those that walk the narrow path, that are willing to slow down and feel the pain of slowing down and allowing Father to guide you. He will guide you. It says that, you know, your word, God's word, is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. What that means when we say that is actually his word in a very simple nutshell. I make it very simple that a five-year-old can understand it. If at all possible, I do the best I can. Love God with your whole heart, might, and soul, and love your neighbor as yourself is the word of God. That's it. I mean, you can say all kinds of elaborate things, but simply put, that's what it is. So if you want light to your feet and to your path, love God with your whole heart, might, and soul, and love your neighbors yourself helps you to know what that narrow path looks like and have it light, lightened in the darkness. And the more you focus on that light, the more that you learn how to use that light um, to where the darkness all of the darkness and all of the destruction and all of the, the difficulties that are in the dark, you focus less on those and it has to flee from the light that's within you that you are seeing because your eyes are adjusting to that light. So, you know, um, that light is again love. And everything, there is nothing, you hear this over and over again, but it's so true. There's nothing more powerful than love. Because God is love, there is nothing more powerful than God. Every loving act, every loving thing that's genuine love is of God. So when you allow that to go through you and you allow to see that uh, in life, wherever you're at, and start looking at that more than the darkness, that's called faith. More faith in the light than faith in the fear and in the darkness and in the pain and in the destruction and everything else. Okay, and therefore you start experiencing more things of the light. Even though you can see the darkness, you start experiencing and having more faith that the light will light, uh, lead you on into, uh, you know, restoration. And in the end, to a life eternal with a really good, good father and with our brother, Yeshua HaMashiach. And we will be able to see when Father restores all things again to the joyous creation that he created at first. So we will enjoy the fullness as well as be full of him for eternity. I hope this helps. I hope this helps encourage you. Just take it one step at a time. Father will not drop you. I know it's, it's, it's really hard. Go slow. Breathe. Know that God's with you. Um, you know, whenever you're feeling scared, just stop. God is with you. I have to do this all the time too. There are times when I get off my rocker, <laughs> like even yesterday I got off, I got off a little bit and I had to talk myself through it. It's like, okay, I know God's with me, but I'm feeling this, this, and this, and, and I'm working through this and I'm feeling like time is, is against me and I'm wanting to get this done and I'm tired and all this stuff. And then when I admit all that and then I say, and I know God has time. I know that, that he is strengthening me. And even in my tiredness, his strength is made manifest and it's going to be okay. And I'm going to slow down and I'm going to believe that. And I'm going to calm my heart. My heart will trust in him. It doesn't matter how long you walk this path. You've got to do the same thing over and over again. It, it, it's the way it is. But you get more proficient at it. And you're able to rebalance yourself and recalibrate yourself uh, faster and quicker with time and also not go down in the gutter so far um, where you have to be pulled out from being so far down. So those are the ways to climb out of the, the, the desperate situations you're in. If life changes dramatically, it feels like you feel you can feel like you're panicking and every and freaking out i and and we all do and just say i know god has something even better for me he's so good he he wants even better for me and even if i've messed up on things he still wants even better for me i trust him that much that he's a good daddy 
He won't, he won't let me down. And I might feel let down, but he has something even better. So if things are deconstructing, he's going to uh, deconstruct it and destroy it so he can put something even better there. And I just have to watch for that process to happen so that with time I'll be able to see it and I'll be patient with it. And I promise you, he shows up. He really does. I know, I'm telling you from my personal testimony. And why I'm telling you is we overcome by the word of our testimony of God's goodness and the blood of the lamb, which is God's goodness. You are forgiven. You're okay. Even in your weakness and, and not being good enough, he's good enough in you. It doesn't matter. You just have to have the heart of wanting to have, want to be, uh, have a relationship with him and do the best you can being a child that's growing and sometimes not getting it right. And he'll guide you and lead you if you allow him to. Okay. And you'll learn how to be guided and leaded and to trust in him instead of in yourself. All right. It's just a process. I hope this encourages you. I'd love to hear feedback from you. Feel free to come to escapealltheseThings.com and you can send us emails from there and also pick up a bunch of uh, free articles that Tim has. Or you can give comments right here on YouTube. I love the comments. I try to get through them when I can and I, I really enjoy them. Uh, and we have a nice interaction on there. Subscribe to the channel and you know when I put up new uh, On the Narrow Path uh, podcasts and you can click on the little bell and it'll tell you when I put something up, which I'm doing a little less of uh, probably every few days. I tried to do it more, but with a new job, <laughs> it's kind of becoming a little more challenging to get it every day and to keep a balanced life and live by example. Mm. Yeah, I've got to live by example myself, live a balanced life, take care of my health, take care of my family, take care of my time with father, work on my own repentance and forgiving, forgiving uh, others and myself, all the stuff that I teach. I, I have to do it too. So I'm working on not being a hypocrite and all of us have a partial hypocrite in us. <laughs> all right. Bless you all.